The markets pick back up right on schedule, but Bitcoin is still trying to figure out where it's going to go. Yesterday, pressing back towards 60K. What does that mean? Altcoins will start surging. Out of the top 100 coins yesterday, over 24 hours, 33 altcoins had better gains than BTC, aka one third of the top 100 were performing better. Obviously, this signals alt season still here and never left. You just need to know where to look. Well, look right here because it's time for Chico Crypto. In crypto, knowing where to look is difficult because everything is extremely murky. Sifting through the dirt is hard work. And that is why Chico Crypto is an entertainment research channel. We're all about pulling out the shovels and digging into the astroturf of the internet to find the things that aren't visibly clear and having fun doing it. Why do we do this? Well, like Sir Joe Dirte, this channel's personal idol. So you don't have to. So you don't necessarily have to. And today we're going to get deeper than Kanye West trying to understand fish dicks. Today we're talking about geysers. No, not the type of geyser that comes out of the earth, like at Yellowstone, I would know I live there, but geysers as in an Ethereum smart contract. Going to the host and creator of these smart contracts, Ample Force website, they say Ample Force geysers are smart faucets that incentivize on-chain liquidity. Users receive AMPL for providing liquidity on automated market-making platforms like Uniswap. The more liquidity you provide and for longer, the greater share of the AMPL pool you receive. With four active geysers on chain providing solid APYs due to the geyser AMPL reward features. But these geysers are all using V1 smart contracts. Geysers are getting ready to go into V2. And the Ample Fourth team just had some office hours on Discord of which the team transcribed for us. The question was asked by the community. I'm hearing lots of chatter of AMPL with Alchemist, having the ability to keep your LP tokens. I see that Alchemist is built on Ample Fourth Geyser contracts. Anything you can elaborate on, NFT related? Of which Brandon Illis, co-founder, engineer, and lead architect of Ample Force answered. He said, oh yeah, great find. That's a sneak peek of Geyser V2 coming in the next round. Since this is new code, we thought it would be a good idea to test it out beforehand in smaller stakes area before the real deal launch. When we launch for AMPL, we want to make sure it's completely solid given the dollar amounts involved. Even though the code has been audited, it's larger and more complicated compared to the old one. This trial has already uncovered an issue that slipped past everyone before. So mission accomplished thus far. I'll elaborate more on the NFT side for another NFT question I see. So did he expand on it, the NFT side? Well, yes, he did. There was a question. If Ampleforth implements NFTs in the way that I think NFTs should be implemented as financial products and not Mimi gifts for 20 ETH, I will cry. Brandon replied to that, I think being excited about NFTs is a bit like being excited about linked lists. I get excited about linked lists, but I'm weird, right? We see real possibility for utility using data structure, and I can't wait to see where it goes with the next geyser. As far as NFT art, it's easy to make fun of it and brush it off. I'm inclined to do that for the most part, but I think the concept is actually philosophically complicated enough that it would warrant a whole podcast to get across. Brandon sees value in NFTs by linking things, and he can't wait for the next geyser to see where to go with this. He also sees the value in the art side of NFTs. Hmm, NFTs with Alchemist coin are of course built with Geyser V2, but they create an NFT which links your stake to multiple LP programs. And the minted NFT crucibles are getting a touch of art. Art competitions going down in Discord as I speak. Any more expansion of NFTs in the office hours? Well, one more question was asked. The important one that leads us to where we want to go. Do you guys think staking across multiple geysers via NFT will be possible someday? 
Brandon replies, yes, Geyser V2 has a new architecture in a component that we call Universal Vaults. This is the part represented as an NFT. The idea is you can use the same LP tokens for multiple programs simultaneously by locking them in the vault once. If this idea gets traction, I can potentially see it becoming standardized or built into normal crypto wallets as an add-on feature. For that, we'll have to wait and see what the traction is though. Hat tip to the at ghost step for being the main dev here, by the way. We all know the ghost step that is Stefan on Twitter, the one working on this experiment called Alchemist Coin. He announced it on Twitter. This is Geyser V2 Universal Vaults they are testing and experimenting with. And if it gains traction, it will be standardized and built into AMPL and beyond. But there's so much more to this alchemy story, and we're going molten core deep soon. But since we're talking about Ampleforth, the first rebase token to gain popularity, it's time for the sponsored segment of this video, supported by the team at the Benchmark Protocol. And like always, the full details of our agreement can be found in the description. A rebase token, rebasing or elastic, and a changing supply. That is what the Benchmark Mark token is all about. It's a concept that ever since Ampleforth deployed has gained huge amounts of following and traction within the crypto space, and even more coming soon. With it, target prices and equilibrium is found by expansion or contraction in the token supply. So how does Benchmark Protocol improve upon this? Well, first we need to understand Ample and how it differs. In Ample, the monetary protocol automatically adjusts the supply of the token across user wallet balances based on price. This means the number of tokens owned changes based on market conditions. When the price is high, wallet balances automatically increase. When the price is low, wallet balances automatically decrease. And Ample is trying to track the US dollar. It's a stable rebase token, which creates a very specific inflation risk profile for the asset based on the dollar. Mark has a global inflation risk profile as it tracks itself to the SDR or special drawing rights, a unit of monetary account created by the IMF. Going to the IMF's website on the SDR, it's composed of five currencies with different weights, US dollar, Euro, Chinese Yuan, Japanese Yen, and the Great British Pound. And as we can see, as of yesterday, one SDR is about $1.42. Thus, the target price of one mark is equal to one SDR, or $1.42 right now. Deviation of the market price of mark from the target SDR price triggers a supply adjustment or rebate balance. This adjustment is applied as percentages over a dynamic smoothing period. And now here's where things get fun with the benchmark protocol. Benchmark also rebases or adjusts by tracking the movement of the VIX volatility index on the CBOE. The daily change of the closing price of the VIX is layered into the rebalancing algorithm. So what is the VIX on the Chicago Board Options Exchange CBOE? Well, it's the most frequently traded exchange listed volatility futures contract in the world, built around the S&P 500, and also known as the fear index. But you shouldn't fear it, as it provides market participants the opportunity to trade their view of the future direction of the S&P 500 index, up or down. If the VIX value increases, it is likely that the S&P 500 is falling. And if the VIX value declines, then the S&P 500 is likely to be experiencing stability. So how does this affect the mark tokens exactly? Well, when the VIX in traditional markets increases, the total supply of mark increases too, increasing the supply when traditional markets are down in the S&P. Why is this done? Well, an increase in the VIX usually indicates an increase in selling pressure. If an asset is scarce during such periods, asset prices can be manipulated by a few bad actors. To counteract that risk, the protocol adds more units of supply. Thus, Mark adjusts the network supply to meet the demand of the markets. The markets need a stable asset when things are falling, and it wouldn't be good if the stable asset they needed wasn't available. 
Like I said, Mark and the Benchmark Protocol provides many benefits over other stablecoins and other rebase stable assets. It's elastic. It's a global currency peg. No collateral. Volatility adjusted rebase. It's inflation shielded, a public team, and a fair launch. And don't forget about the Benchmark liquidity mining program called the Press, putting the stable assets to work. Two live and solid Uniswap LP pools with crazy APYs of 250 50% plus. Also, they have balancer pools with very respectable APYs too, and even in-app staking with Xmark. But right around the corner, if we go to their roadmap, we can see the P2P marketplace is the next deployment. This will be their peer-to-peer -peer lending service, where a lender creates a marketplace contract through the benchmark interface and defines the conditions, such as the lending out of the tokens, the loan ratio, etc., for the certain loan offering. This means a single loan offering can serve many different borrowers as long as the created marketplace contract holds enough tokens to provide the loan. And guess who just partnered to add their tokens to this when it goes live? One of my favorites, Ocean Protocol. So if any of this fits your fancy, you can get based by checking out all the benchmark links below. And now let's finish this episode off with making those deep connections that no one else has seen regarding Alchemist Coin. We understand how close this project is to Ampleforth. Well, those connections are deeper and clearer with this news. Captain Haddock on Twitter tweeted this three days ago. Today, the Ghost Step announced that Ample Force architect Simon Hemant Brandon Illis joined the team of multi-sig signers of the Alchemist project with a picture from Discord of the Ghost Step announcing it. Haddock continues, other signers are Sushi Swaps developer Xerox Mackie and Fisconti. Xerox Mackie, why is this important? They are involved. We'll just go back to the Ghost Steps announcement tweet and the example how to use the NFT Crucible. He shows Sushi Swap LPs as one of the possible LPs you could multi stake in concurrently. Mackie and multi signer, it's already there as an example with the Ghost Steps. Sushi will more than likely be an option for the crucibles. So I knew the blend of NFTs and DeFi was coming and I'm always down for the ride, but I want to finish this episode off with what Fisconte said, the other multi-sig that was mentioned. He tweeted, Disclaimer, it's true, I put my reputation behind it as a multi-sig holder. That being said, there are no promises, just a wild experimentation ahead of us. This is a trip to alternate dimensions, not just simply to the moon. Anything goes, and I can't guarantee number go up. Experiment, anything goes, alternate dimensions? Chico likes. Cheers, I'll see you next time.